Yeah, my name is Willie Kadus. Uh, I'm the head of engineering here at Anyscale, a company that is the, behind the open source project Ray. And believe it or not, I really don't drink coffee. I, I, maybe I'm the last person in Silicon Valley who doesn't, but I'm much more of a cold drinks type of person. And I try not to use uh, anything that's gonna cloud my mind. Yeah, so um, back in Australia, where I'm from, I was doing my PhD and, you know, this was machine learning in the mid nineties, you know, back then it was what was called the second AI winter. You know, machine learning was just kind of this tiny little corner of a wider artificial intelligence thing, not blossoming like now. I remember it being in ICML 2002 and it had like 300 people there. And now you hear about things like NeurIPS or, or, or those types of conferences that have like 6,000, 7,000 yeah, people. Yeah, huge. So it was a lot smaller then. And back then it was like the older, more information theoretic based approaches like decision trees and that type of stuff. They were just coming on. This was the dawn of like Bayesian stuff and support vector machines, which I know have gone out of fashion, but still have their uses. I still remember in 2005, actually, I was working, uh, I, I attended NeurIPS and the funniest thing about NeurIPS was there was almost no neural papers. There were actually more biological neuron papers than there were like artificial neural networks. So it's funny how things turn and, and switch in history. But, you know, there's also kind of recurring themes. Like um, I remember I was doing the experience with my PhD and I was doing hyperparameter tuning and it was just taking too long. Sure. So I did the math on how long it would take for me to finish my PhDs and decision trees applied to time series. It was like, it was going to take six months of experiments. So I just wow. kind of said, you know what, I'm going to hack together 17 boxes and kind of write some really hacky at the time Perl scripts to kind of distribute the workloads across those 17 machines. And yeah, it turned out other people found those machines useful. And I think there was like five or six PhDs built on that little, at the time, what we used to call Beowulf clusters. Um, right. Yeah, to, to do the processing. And then, you know, I, I did a couple of postdocs. Within those postdocs, I focused on Again, machine learning for speech and then for robots. So using computer vision to recognize victims in disaster sites. It took me a while. It took me like 16 years, but I worked out that I, I wasn't a very good academic. And so uh, I kind of decided it was time to, to go work somewhere else. So I ended up joining Google and working on maps. And that was a really, really fascinating experience. Again, you know, it's kind of crazy. You start to see some, some very, very recurring trends. It's like, so... I'd be working on processing GPS traces for a small area. And then all of a sudden I'd have to do it for like the 8 million miles of the United States of America. And so you have to scale up this tiny little algorithm that you wrote for like one block or two blocks to like 9 million square blocks. And we started to apply some machine learning there. Honestly, you know, I had a little bit of um, battle scarring from doing my PhD. So I didn't even want to touch machine learning for 2000 and, uh, you know, for like a decade after I did it. But then it started to really come back and I ended up managing a computer vision team based in Pittsburgh, actually. And, you know, these teams, they, they were an acquisition they were doing some really cool stuff with computer vision. But back then it was the old fashioned stuff of like, what's the distance between the eyes and can I build a classified? One day I'm talking to them and says, what's up with this neural stuff? This is back in 2012. And it's like, oh man, this thing is for real. I said, you know, I was very skeptical at the time. I was like, man, this is like the third time. Why is it going to work this time? And then they started to tell me, dude, it's getting superhuman results. Those old algorithms we were working on, man, uh, they're, they're, they're just gone. not cutting it anymore compared with really? all these deep learning based approaches. And so it was really funny to me the way things come and go. You know, at the time I couldn't believe it. Deep learning, the third time was, was the, the time. So by now it's about 2012, 2013. And you start to see things like the AlphaGo victory in 2016 and you go, okay, this is for real. And at that point I moved to Uber. And again, at the very forefront of the machine learning revolution, and I was kind of like the elder statesman of real, like machine learning at Uber for various reasons. I ended up not being part of the machine learning group, but kind of advocated across the entire organization, across Maps and everyone else to really have Uber take cutting edge machine learning like deep learning seriously and close some acquisitions of some some really interesting companies. And then about two years ago, funnily enough, I joined Anyscale. And Anyscale is a company behind the open source project called Ray. And Ray, funnily enough, it's like closing the loop. I was going back to my PhD again, where I was hacking those 17 boxes together and going, okay, let me try to do what I did in my PhD. And, you know, I knew I was onto something when the fans of my, um, of my laptop started spinning up because it was actually using all of the eight CPUs and actually making the machine get hot. It was like, you know, this tech is pretty cool. Cool. Then when I ported it to actually run on like 
16 machines, it was, you know, within 50% of theoretical maximum after three hours of hacking. And it got, you know, this, this technology is really cool. First of all, it's been, it's been crazy to see the revolutions in, in, in machine learning over that time, but also some of the recurring themes like scalability. But, you know, looking at what's happened most recently with LLMs, I've never seen anything like this before in those, in those 30 years, right? Um, I haven't seen us cross over, you know, machine learning cross over into the mainstream the way it has most recently. But the interesting thing, again, with LLMs and these super huge, you know, 175 billion parameter models is it's just, it's, it's going to be a scalability problem again. And again, you know, it's just kind of like this, this recurring loop of like, we get more computational power and then we use it to do even crazier stuff, which needs more computational power. And it's just like, it's fascinating to see these loops go on and on in history.